Hi, I'm Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I wanted to show you the video of the quilting that I've done on this hexagon quilt. I have done more research on this quilt and found out that the name of this block is a spiderweb block. Now when I did the original research I just uh, looked up words like hexagon and quilt and I was coming up with grandmother's flower garden quilts and um, then this morning when I was looking at the block I decided that it just looked like a spider web so I looked up spider web and there it was there were several different variations of this block in the way that they are set and also in the way that they are put together some of them are more uh, are octagon shaped instead of hexagon shaped and uh, a lot of the settings are different um, this is the only one that I have seen set like this in the photographs that I saw online but I'm sure there probably are other quilts just like this what I had decided to do um, I've been working on this quilt most of the week and what I decided to do was to do the egg and dart pattern on this quilt because it did look like a spider web to me and I wanted to kind of enforce that look in this quilt and I didn't want to put a lot of dense quilting in it so um, I just doing the egg and dart um, by doing the curves all the way around using my straight edge when I need to to stitch in the ditch to get up to the next area of the ring. Now the thread I'm using is 100% cotton by signature and the name of the thread is parchment. So it's a off-white thread and it blends in really well with all of these hexagon blocks, all of these spiderweb blocks. The timing on this I did time the quilting and I can get through one of these blocks in just about two minutes so it's a really fast pattern for this quilt and it went pretty smoothly I did use the uh, stitch regulator on here so that I could stop when I needed to and reach for my ruler and get up to the next level of the rings now since this is a spider web pattern uh, the flower in the center probably doesn't really go with this. Um, probably would have been looked just as well if I used a continuous curve. But I wanted something a little bit floral in the quilting design since there are a lot of floral fabrics in this quilt. Now this hexagon here, this spider web that I'm quilting now, I start in the center just like I did with the other one um, and I'm quilting a little flower here just by using some petals that reach up to the points in the hexagon. And then I'll break my thread and I'll start doing the egg and dark quilting in each of the rings. Now if you want to have more precise quilting in this design here, you can use circle templates or oval templates um, or an a arch template, a curved template to do this. The thing is that you would probably be changing out your templates quite frequently because as the rings go out from the center they get longer and to do your curve from one point to the next you need a shallower curve but a bigger template. Um, so this is a design that just with a little practice you can get the hang of these curves pretty easily. And it's just going around and um, get up to the next set of rings and doing your arch. And you can see in this block there is a, one section where there's a, some fullness in the section of that ring. And as I said in a previous video, I don't fight the fullness that's in these vintage tops because it's been in there for so long it's going to be really hard to get out and to me it's just not worth fighting. Now there's no pleats in this one or puckers but there are there is some fullness there especially in that one section of the ring that you can see. But the point of quilting these is to make them usable uh, so that they have a a use and somebody can enjoy them is not to just fold them up and set them back into storage where they've 
probably been for the last 50 to 80 years. Uh, this, I'm guessing this is more of a 1930s quilt. Most of the fabrics are 30s. Some of them I'm not certain about. Um, they could be older, they could be newer. I'm not an expert on dating quilts, but I do know 1930s fabrics pretty well. And there are a lot of 30s in here. So the next phase on this quilt, after I got all these hexagon spiderweb blocks done, I worked on the star points. And I had decided to go ahead and uh, mark a small triangle in the center of these points. And each side of these triangles was about six inches. So I just had to find the center part point mark a dot and then connect those dots to make my little triangle and I'm just using a little six inch ruler here to do that. Now the chalk I'm using is children's chalk. It's non, it is not dust free chalk. This is just the regular chalk that they used to use in schools. When, when I was a little girl we just had one kind of chalk and used it on the blackboards. And I use a uh, large opening on my pencil sharpener to sharpen that to a fairly good point so that I'm not using a, a real dull point. But I'm doing continuous curve around the outside of these triangles and down along each one of the chalked markings that I've made. And this way it is symmetrical. It doesn't matter what, uh, it doesn't have to be directional. If I had a directional pattern quilted into this it would start looking kind of awkward because each one of these little star points is connected to another hexagon, at least two other hexagons. They're connected to three hexagons altogether. So to get that to look like it belongs it has to be a non-directional pattern. So I decided to do this continuous curve. And the thread color I'm using here is called Dolphin and this is also by Signature and it is 100% cotton. And then I just, when I get done quilting, I use my, uh, this is a fabric brush, a lint brush, and I just uh, brush that chalk away, and then we're all done. And then I have some photos here of the finished quilt. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.